So a couple weeks ago, I went to Texas to visit some family that I haven't seen in a while. I stayed in an Airbnb that my cousin rented out for us, and for the most part, it was a pretty nice house. The problem was that for the most part, there was no air conditioning, and the Wi-Fi was really bad. Besides going out when my niece was free to drive us, I was basically trapped in an oven with no internet or hot water, and as someone who refuses to go out and socialize, I made the smart decision to download movies and videos, legally. It was mostly movies that I haven't watched yet, like Godzilla Minus One, The Lego Batman, and a lot of kit bashing videos. As I was watching these videos, I was hit with an idea for my next video. It needed to be something unique, something that captured the art of creating something. It needed to be something that talked about trash. And that video turned into Dragon and Chameleon, which uh, by the way, you should check out. It's really good. But then a week later, I discovered a new manga that was centered around trash and making it useful. So now we're talking about that. Gachi Akuta is a dark fantasy manga written by Kei Urana and is published by Kondasha. The story is set in a place called Heaven, a floating island that houses two groups, the wealthy upper class and the tribesfolk. The wealthy aren't exactly super rich, with a lot of them being just regular people with access to a lot of things. As you can imagine, they act exactly how you would expect them to, as they constantly look down on tribesfolk and are very materialistic, always replacing things over the smallest mess-ups. Our main character is one of those tribesfolk, Rudo he makes a living by being an illegal dumpster diver, finding anything that the wealthy throw out and then reselling them. Despite being in the same situation as everyone, they all constantly treat him like trash, all because of his father. You see, trash folk are people that descended from criminals, and have been trying to get rid of that image for who knows how long. Since Rudo's father was a murderer, and he kept killing people, this ruined their reputation, and Rudo had to shoulder all the blame. Gee, thanks a lot, Dad. His life isn't all bad, however, as he still has people in his life that care about him. The two being Chiwa, his childhood friend, and his adopted father, Recto. On his way back from trying to rizz up Chiwa, he comes back home only to find his father murdered. The police show up and they arrest Rudo, believing that he's the killer, and sentence him to the abyss, a place where all the trash that the wealthy throw out and criminals are dumped. He tries to tell everyone that he's innocent, but no one believes him, and since Chiwa has been watching Tower of God, she drops him as well. With no one on his side, Rudo calls everyone out for their bullshit, and there he spots the man that murdered his father. He vows to kill him and everyone for falsely accusing him, and just before he could finish, he's dropped into the abyss giving us the coolest panel I've seen in a while. In fact, it's so cool that I actually have this on my wallpaper. God, I love reading manga. From here, we see the actual setting for the manga and where most of the story will take place. The Abyss is a dystopian world where the trash that's been dropped has mutated into monsters and made most of the world to be unlivable. Un unlivable? What the fuck? Think of it like the world of Wally, -E, but with a bit of Fallout vibes to it, as there's many distinct cities, locations, factions, and colorful people, like this old guy here. I mean, old lady. The cast have their own distinct personalities, and it's best represented through the weapons they use. You see, the way that people get special powers is that the item they're using needs to have some sort of personal connection to them. And over time, they'll collect this energy called anima. Once enough is collected and you're able to use it, you'll become a giver, and are able to kill monsters that live in the abyss. This is honestly one of the coolest concepts I've seen, and as more weapons start to get introduced, I get excited seeing how they'll be used. We have people using scissors like it's kill a kill with their legs, Pink brushes that can make attacks come to life, nail guns turning into rail guns, and a stick that becomes a metal stick. Trust me, he's a cool character, just let him cook. Rudo as a main character feels very realistic as he's compulsive, awkward, and very oblivious to certain situations. It makes sense since he was literally dropped into another world alone and is witnessing a massive culture shock. One thing that doesn't change for him, however, is his love for junk. To him, they remind him of his father and the lessons that he taught him about taking care of items. He's not perfect by any means, he's just a kid that loves trash and is slowly trying to figure out what he wants. As well as figuring out how to talk to girls. Man looks just like me for real, like look at him. Blank face and everything. As we start to uncover bits and pieces about the world, we're still left with some questions about how it's all connected. We're only at 104 chapters at the moment, and we still don't know anything about Rudo's origins, how his father got his gloves, or even what this is. I appreciate that the author is taking her time with explaining the lore of the world and not speedrunning towards the big reveal, giving us time to form our own ideas and theories about what's happening. Needless to say, the art style is fantastic, as you might imagine from somebody who worked with making the art for Fire Force. I'm not an art expert by any means, but my sister is, so I had to ask her for help in making this segment. What can I say, my monkey brain saw good art and my neurons got activated. What makes the manga unique is the way that the author shades her art as compared to others. You can see her constantly using this mark making technique in almost all her panels, and it helps make her themes about objects stand out. Her character designs are some of the best ones I've seen, with each design having a unique outline that you can visibly recognize. From their hair all the way down to their clothes, everything just has this strong punk aesthetic to them and it fits well with this dystopian world. Fight scenes feel cool to watch as there's just this fluid motion to them, making the action feel fast and explosive. 
Let's also not forget to get props to Ando, because these graffiti designs are just amazing. If it wasn't obvious, I really like this manga. The themes, the art, everything is just so amazing, and its theme of treasuring your items is really wholesome, and in today's society, it speaks a lot. But how easy it is to replace things that are broken or just upgrade to the latest model, we forget how much time we spent with them and just how well they've served us. For me, I still have my Game Boy that a best friend gave to me. Even though I don't play it now, I still remember the fun times I had with it. For others, it could be their first car, a pair of shoes that they saved up to buy, or even something as simple as a pair of earbuds. You'll always remember the fun times that you spent with it, no matter how many times you upgraded or changed it. And if I manage to convince you to give this manga a try, then let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this manga, and if you have any other recommendations, let me know and I'll check it out. I'm currently working on another video based on a user recommendation, and I'm hoping to have it out soon. Until then, have a good day, stay safe, and keep reading.